Howdy everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a brake can on this here 2004 International. Um, I know everyone has uh, their own way of doing this. It's a pretty simple job. If you haven't done one, um, it might be a little overwhelming to you. Um, I've watched some videos online, uh, you know, seeing inexperienced people doing it on their, their motorhomes and things like that. So that's kind of comical to me. Um, but some people call it a air can. North Dakota they call it cans, cans. Um, the book term is probably a chamber, brake chambers. Um, I worked with a German, a German guy one time. I mean, he was he was just out of Germany. He spoke English and he called him chambers, the Brock chambers. That was, anyways. So let's get started on this. Um, I've seen a lot of people like cage them. They're caging their brakes to take them off and. All right, I'm gonna interrupt this guy while I'm editing. I'm just gonna say I'm not certified. I've been driving trucks for 17 years. I've been a mechanic throughout those 17 years working on my own trucks and other people's trucks during downtimes. I'm not gonna use any fancy tools, but you wanna remember safety, chalk the tires, wear your safety glasses, ear protection. You wanna watch your pinch points. And you want to do this on a flat level surface. Don't be doing this at the top of some mountain. Anyways, let's get back to the video and see what this guy has to say. You want to make sure your tires are blocked before you go releasing the parking brake. This is actually a really long video for me. I don't normally do 45 minute videos. I tried to eliminate some of the stuff, <clears throat> but I couldn't decide as every step is a teachable moment and a hurdle that you may actually encounter. I would rather have a quick clean can swap for a YouTube video, but those rarely happen. And this is real life and will give you more uh, tips and tricks for difficult jobs and uh, the difficult things that might arise while you're doing a can. So as unpreferable as a tough can is to do, it's actually better for this video. I need down here together and I'll tell you why with the seven eighths and the, and the 15 sixteenths. And then we'll, because uh, you, you don't actually need all that. I, I'll show you why I have both, though. So actually, this brake can here still functions properly. The diaphragms are still good. But you have this crack here. You can see that the, the spring has been slowly, slowly working its way out. And uh, this is cracked here. I don't know if the DOT would get you for that, but they would definitely, definitely get you for that. So let's get underneath. They're all a little different, so we'll see what style this is. Oh, this is an easy one. Okay. So you can see this angle here. See this, uh, basically, from this pin to this pin is a line, and then from this pin to the back of the can is a line. And I'm going to have to look it up. I believe 90 degrees. I believe it's 110 degrees released, and it's 90 degrees um, when they're set. Uh, I could have that backwards, but yeah. So you have your most torque here because this is a radius. You have your most torque at 90 degrees. As you push away, you're starting to actually pull, pull on this because it's round and this rod is straight and wants to go out. It has the most torque at 90, and then it starts to lose some torque <clears throat> as it goes past 90 because because um, it's wanting to go up because it's a radius. So um, same thing if it's the other way around. I don't know why, but um, when you're pulling, your most torque is at 90 degrees. As you start pulling closer towards you, <clears throat> this wants to rotate on the... Uh, the axis here and at 90 degrees it's got all the torque going linearly with the shaft as it goes past 90 this arm wants to swing in a, in a radial arc like this so it's pulling up and back at the same time after 90 degrees so you have your most torque your most torque at 90 degrees 
which is probably I think that's how I remember that it should be at 90 degrees you've had you know most of these are factory set but you get an old truck like this 20 years old you know heaven knows how many different guys have been under this truck how many times this can has been replaced let's give them each a little bit of a spray on this can this type of can right here you can access this right here with an impact I probably would normally hit this nut with an impact just to get it off but um, some of these are all the way up against the axle um, and so you have to do it all with wrenches So we'll just lube them up a little bit, give that pin a little bit of lube. And then the reason I grab the 15 sixteenths and the 7 eighths is because I can never remember if it's 15 sixteenths or 7 eighths. It's 15 sixteenths, but then these are always super, super tight. They've been under the truck vibrating and getting just hammered. I've never had one finger tight but yeah I went about the only bolt tighter than one of these I could think of is like a chassis bolt so righty tighty lefty loosey so you pull up the reason I got the two two wrenches like this is I know it's one or the other and then let's see if you can see this I'm gonna double wrench this these are these are snap-on wrenches but I've done this with husky husky wrenches I don't know when you do this just make sure there's nothing up here that you're if it slips you're gonna punch into you know a razor sharp zip tie end or something like that and you just do it really controlled really controlled pressure up kind of sucks it's nicer when you can uh, pull down use your weight mount your weight a little bit but we'll get this this will be I usually don't use a creeper, but working in the shop with garbage trucks, the stuff on the floors I do not want on me. So without a creeper, you have a lot more torque. You won't be rolling it away. Uh, it's going to be a jerk. So what I do when they're a jerk, I put a little torque on them like this. And then I, I'll tap on them with a hammer. Like that, just get them spinning. Just get them moving. Once you get them moving, you can do your double wrench. Let me pull it. If I can put it down like that, then I can use my legs as a brace. Yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get broke. Um, what I'm gonna do is get both of these broke loose, and then I'm gonna put it in the time lapse. So let's get the top one broke loose. I, think I can do it with no no cheater. Yeah, right. I got without giving it a couple wraps with a hammer. So I know what you're thinking right now. Well, all that pressure. There's all that pressure on there. I didn't cage the. I didn't cage it. It's gonna spring off and kill me or dismember, mangle my face. But you watch as I loosen this up. By the time I get to the end of these threads, I'll be almost able to uh, just use my hand to push it in. And then what I can do, pop this out. Yep, quarter inch square, I'll pop this out. And I'll just turn the slack adjuster until... If I can't control it, like I can't push it in and free spin the nut, then what I'll do is I'll adjust it. But normally... Once you get these all the way out to the ends, um, you can darn near just push in on the can and um, just get the last couple threads. 
then in the reverse when you put it on you pin it and then uh you pin it and then you shove it in and just get like one thread a couple threads start bringing this one in and then you can get the nut started on the other one um by just like pushing up so we'll see some trucks I've never, I've never had to, but I'm assuming there's a truck that this wouldn't work on. I don't, I haven't found one yet, but I never say never because I learn something new every day. And usually when I feel like I know it all, like today, that's when you, that's when it gets you. You have to learn something new again. So let's put you in the time lapse here so you don't have to sit here and listen to me breathe. I have had it where these nuts and studs start to spin inside the can and there's no way to get on the back side there to hold the stud so that you can spin it loose. So you may have to cut it. You can use a grinder with a grinding wheel or a cutting disc or a torch. But if you have to do that, remember that spring pressure. Okay, before you take the can completely off and maybe, I don't know, maybe a professional would do this first, but you want to crack these airlines here. And you know the convenient way would be to have the swivel down here. But this is an international. And they hate their customers. So they put the swivel way up there. I'm not even going to point. It's back there somewhere. Just, just somewhere in that vicinity. I'm going to show you a little, little life hack. I guess that's the way I've done it. Uh, to get around having to go way back under... Um, the back side of the truck there to, to get those. I'm going to try and get a camera angle on this, but if not, use your imagination. A lot of times you need two wrenches. And this is one thing I didn't bring the wrenches down for. I should have. You should bring like a 13 with you. And a, a 13 sixteenths and a three quarter. And you're going to want to hold one fitting and then do the other. I put lube on these. I don't know if it helps. It's just something, one way I've always done it. So put you back into the time lapse use your imagination for the breathing and uh some funny jokes that i i would tell if if you weren't in time lapse and you could hear me lo and behold there's still some air in this system this truck wasn't hasn't ran since yesterday but it's gonna it's gonna hiss for a minute and we're gonna see if that sock adjuster comes back out fought me all the way off. They don't normally fight me all the way off. Usually they fight for a little bit and then they let go. That tells you how long this can's been on here. This one's painted and they don't they don't really paint these cans anymore. And these painted ones actually lasted a lot longer. I'd say twice as long. And I don't know, I'm not saying that they don't paint them anymore, but the ones there, the shelf cans at Napa, they're not painted and they don't last nearly as long. Um, for the upper, for the swivel, on this hose, 13 sixteenths, and then the, the little guy inside was three quarter, and you could see that that elbow that they that this went into is actually loose. Um, what I'm gonna do instead of trying to get another turn, I'm gonna take that out, put some Teflon on it, and then put it back in. I'm gonna break it loose on the on the can here before I take that last time off. Um, when you don't just go and reef on this; these will break off in there, and you know you can reuse this fitting. But I've seen them like on top of the air compressor an elbow big thick elbow like this and the, the airline going into it like this and then it's just screwed right into the top of the air compressor and a guy goes over there with a big adjustable wrench puts it on and just goes like that breaks it off the threads right here so i'll always try if i can if i'm not in a hurry i'll always try and grab whatever size this is it's 13 on this one and i'll i'll actually actively um pull against it just to make sure just actually, righty tidy, lefty loosey. Just keeps it from breaking. Oh, yeah, right. There we go. It's got to get broke loose. You don't want to spin it too many times because these hoses, you know, they go all the way up in there. But that that's just the, just to break it loose while it's while it's on there. This can I think is broken, so I think the springs broke, uh, but the rubber's not. So there's no pressure on this. You'll see. 
Um, this this rod is actually it should be out, but it's not. So we'll have to figure that out when we're cutting it. But these pins aren't too hard to get out. They get like a a, a valley grooved in them, and uh, that valley. Oh, look at that! That can is. I don't. I think that one's beyond hammered. I'm gonna go get a little needle nose. Yeah, you can torch these off if you if you need to, or if you're in a hurry. You just you know, nip them off. It's way faster. The cans come with new, new nuts and washers and clevis. So don't get your butt kicked by these cotter keys. I've seen guys get hung up on these little cotter keys before. Grab a vice grip, try and get them out straight. If all else fails. You can sneak a grinding wheel up in there or take a small punch and a hammer and knock them out. Don't get hung up by these little cotter keys. Use this guy since I got it out already. I'm going to just rotate that to where I can just pull down on the clip. Pull down on the... Like that. See, I don't have the big popular life hacks that everybody likes that a billion people are going to watch. It'd be like seven people. Maybe nine and a half that ever watch this that watch it for informational purposes yeah these here you try and keep them but most times a can comes with a new clevis and a new pin just pull on it wiggle it back and forth I saw a guy one time use a torch on these because it's so tight he couldn't get the pin out. And then I did the other side and just released the brakes and the cab, chalked the tires, took the pressure off of it, pin came right out. Remember what I said about being proven wrong? It's never too late to be humbled. I'm taught a lesson. Not that I don't know everything. If you think that looks awkward, you should try it. Oh. Yeah, that can is... What I'm going to do... So I'm not... Fighting the weight of the can while it's going down. I'm going to put a nut back on it. Where the hell did a nut go? If you ever worked on brake cans, you know you can't walk across the shop floor without finding one of these brake can nuts just laying around from before. But when you're looking for one that you just took off, there's no chance. You're never going to find it. Boy, that was tight. This one fought me all the way to about one, maybe one and a half threads. And it didn't get finger tight till I don't know. I don't know, it probably fought me to three threads and then it probably wasn't finger tight until... Couple threads, a half a thread. Watch the video, I don't know. Usually the cans are a little more holding themselves up than this. The, this one here is double jointed. Jointed here and back in there. Probably triple jointed. Okay, I got that on there. I know this pin moves because I, I beat it once kind of tighten there but you can use that to your advantage to get a wrench in there like that and then just pull it down until it gets tight and then use the wrench like that yeah like that I don't know the technical terms for these moves I'm making I bet if I took the pressure off I could pull that right out no no I didn't bet very much. I said I'd bet, so I don't know. I didn't bet very much. It was only a few cents. Ugh. Come on. Oh. See, yeah, naturally that slack adjuster wants to push back the springs um, in the shoe 
shoes are like this. Yes, spring between them. The shoe is pushing down together, wanting to roll the S cam. So that kind of spring pressure you can fight. This big spring back here, you're not going to be nearly as successful fighting it. But there's all kinds of little tricks you can do. I don't know if they're OSHA approved. I don't know if you can release the parking brake with the tires chopped to suck this in so you can get a can off really quick. Have I done it? Yeah. Am I going to do it again? Yes. Is it approved by OSHA? I don't know. I have no idea. It just seems safer to me than... Um, I don't know. Quicker? Yeah, see, there's still still pressure on that, but not so much that I can't push against it with my hand. Make sure your fingers are out of the way. Look at that. Whoa. Okay. Okay, so here comes your life hack lesson for the day. I'm going to do exactly what you think I'm going to do. Yeah, you know, just, just as... Just as basic as it gets, and if it starts fighting you right away, then you can hold this with your There's nothing special about this wrench, it's just the one I grabbed. I do kind of like it though. Okay, so which way is that? Tightening it, so then we're gonna go this way. We're just gonna spin the whole darn thing round and round and round. Can get if it if it's not free spinning right away, like this one is, you can get like a spin on it or spin and a half, and then take your wrench because it'll it'll just start to bind up. You can take your wrench, hold it, or you know get a couple twists in it, and then take your wrench, get the twists out, spin it again. But yeah. Whoa. Make sure it's I hit my camera with that. That's why I said that it would be easier without this extra hose in the way. I like to do the least amount possible under the truck. I like, you know, I can do this out out there where it's actually like the the creeper digging into my shoulder. It gets to me. Look at that. The little springs totally garbage in that one. Oh, look at that. We're out. Make sure your hose doesn't have any twists left in it. Now, let's drag this turd out of here. Put it on a bench and see if we can make sense of any of this. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. So normally what you would do is you would take a coat hanger or something that you can get down um, in here. You would take your measurement flush with the top right here to the end of the threads on the rod. I don't know if you can see down in there or not, but he's supposed to look like that. And I don't know exactly what the measurement is. So what we can do is we can actually go look at the other can and look at the other can on the same axle, the one that's next to this. Possibly get a measurement off of that. We'll see. What you can do if you have the same brand of replacement can is measure the threads that are left on the rod there that pushes out. And then you just measure that same amount of threads on your new can from the unthreaded part. And then that'll give you how far you should cut. But I'm gonna show you how you can find this measurement if you don't have a can or if you're not sure, or if the can is a different brand. But most of the TRP cans are made within a certain spec and are exactly the same. So with that brake can, I wasn't able to get like an actual, a good measurement on the shaft. I mean, I could measure the threads and stuff, and I'm assuming that they thread this rod the same on all the cans, but I don't know. And I don't trust the... The truck to give me an accurate measurement you know uh, you could normally what they do normally what you do is you take the old can take a coat hanger you know measure from here to wherever your point is the end of your threads it'd be like right here you take your coat hanger do that then you take your coat hanger and bring it over here mark it there and that's where you make your cut but 
that's not going to work. This can is totally hammered, hammered, and boogered. But I'm going to show you how you can figure out this distance without um, a witness, without an old one, if you're ever unsure. And um, I'm hoping it, that uh, th this will make sense to you. But let's go underneath. You're going to need a square. I got this nice little one. But you're going to need a square and a tape measure. Okay. So you're going to definitely need some sort of a square. Now, if you look at a brake can, you know where you, you normally measure from the face of the can where the rod comes out. You start right there. And that's how you get your measurement. Well, where is that? That actually falls perfectly flush with this bracket. This bracket comes off the, the axle. It was uh, it was welded by the factory. It was all designed. We know that this slack adjuster has the maximum braking power at 90 degrees. So we know that when the can is mounted here and the parking brake is set, this should be at 90 degrees. When the parking brake is set, the can is out as far as it'll go. So what we should be able to do is like so we know it's square you need another square and you're going to make it in, make sure it's a 90 off of here and that'll be the center of the pin of your big pin on your clevis without a square you could shoot a measurement from the center of the s cam to the face of that bracket and get the same measurement this square and you want to make sure that it's square along the bottom here and then go out like this until you're at the center of that, the, uh, the axis up top. And then, I'm just going to hold it a little bit. And we can see right there that it's at four inches. It's exactly four inches. So we know that the big pin on the can needs to be at four inches. The, the big pin in the clevis will be four inches from the base of the can. It would normally sit right here. So let's go see what that looks like. Four inches is the center of the pin. The center of the pin there. And then what you can do is just kind of eyeball off of here. That's where you're going to cut it. And you can leave a little extra. You can actually leave quite a bit extra. But we'll cut that right about there. We're going to cut on the high side of that mark. One thing you should do before you before you go cutting on this rod here is spin your jam nut all the way down past your mark. And this is another uh, of Mike's mini life hacks that no one really cares about. I suppose you have a motorhome and you've been working on cars your whole life and you're confident that you can take something apart and put it back together, but you're not 100% sure of it. It's truck brakes they gotta be some specialty thing and some states from my home state Washington State a mechanic like me I couldn't work on truck brakes I'd have to go you have to go to a class it's like two weeks at the college in North Dakota they still kind of trust you to make your the best decision for your company they should make a tool that does this automatically it's a long socket Maybe I get like one of them eraser wheels, you know, they used to burn off decals. I wonder if you set that here. Anyways, all right. So we're past the mark. Make our cut. When you're cutting with these, you always want the blade to, to be pulling. The spark should be coming back at you, and that way if it kicks, it pulls away from you. and doesn't kick back at you. But... Okay, now the reason we left that nut on there so you can chase the threads back off and any of the threads that laid over while you're doing that um, and get them to kind of deburr the threads a bit. You can use a hacksaw, you can use, I don't know, probably use, a, I don't think a torch would get, would be clean enough. 
some sort of a cutting disc like that hacksaw the nuts warm absorbing all the heat from the cut for this nut but when I look at that factory can or more than closer to factory uh, yeah when I look at that factory can it's got a really short shaft really short uh, excess here so I'm not even going to take that one all the way off I just ran it out a little bit I wonder if they'll ever play this video like at a community college or one of them classes like this never do this when I put the clevis on it wouldn't screw on far enough to hit four inches with the jam nut on there so I took the jam nut off and I put the clevis back on and I screwed it all the way down until the thread stopped. And that was right at exactly four inches. If you have extra threads, you'll need that jam nut so that you can tighten that clevis up. Be careful doing stuff like this. You can tweak these ears, but there we go. I'm going to take these over to the wire wheel and come back with some Teflon tape. I could take you guys along for the ride if you'd like. But it's just going to be a time lapse. Teflon tape so it doesn't ball up in the threads. This is how I remember it. Point the threads away from you. And you want to keep your reel in your right hand and go underneath. And just think of it like you're screwing a nut. You're going the same direction you would put a nut on. Come back on top of that tail. I usually do two wraps. I think that's enough. And that's how you'll never get a uh, balled up Teflon tape. The biggest thing when putting the brass back in is to remember the way they were pointing, sometimes called the clocking. This is where I always get here and decide if I should go one more or not. I think I should. I shouldn't have. It's kind of pointing that way. Put your hose on. And then the rubber they use inside has gotten worse. So that, I don't know what they call it. California rubber. California rubber saves the planet, except the part that used to last 10 years now lasts two years, so you use five times as many. It's a great plan. All right, so let's go get ready to throw this underneath there. I'll go put you on, under the truck. All right, camera is rolling. Let's see if the mic is on, green light is on. Let's go. Let the nonsense begin. We got to put this on first. What you can do here is you can back, yep, you can back twist this, depending on how long it is, four or five turns. Come down here. So I just back twisted the, the airline that we took out. Much as you want, much as you can. Get it started in that hole and just slowly let go. And there you go. You got a few threads started. Just kind of what you, you know. Spin it around once. Watch your, your hose twist up, up there. So we back twisted the hose again, and then you just tighten it, and it straightens that hose back out. If you end up with an extra twist, you just spin the can around. And make sure you don't get your fingers caught between anything. There it's pinned. Don't whack stuff like this with your hands because it I think it really causes like joint problems later in life. 
these holes here are double slotted so we're going to figure out which slots they were in before and you can tell by on this side which has a spot where a nut was I need to borrow the the light here so the washer mark is on the top hole sometimes you can get a nut started on the bottom if you leave the washer off and then you can uh, push up on the can and get a nut started on the top and then once you get them in far enough you take one nut off and put the washer on put that nut back on and then do the same for the top i could have done it here if i adjusted the brake but I wanted to show a different way, a way that's a lot easier, and you don't have to use all the brake adjusting, and you don't have to cage the brakes. What you can do is put the airline back on, go start the truck, push the parking brake in, it'll suck this in. Once you're like this, just be careful when you do stuff like that. You don't come back and put your finger here. You go boom. If it's caught up on the thread, make sure it's in the right hole. What you can't see off camera here is that I'm taking a vice grip and I'm pinching the air supply line to the parking brake. That way when I push the button in and I come back and lay on the ground here, I can control the flow simply by slowly releasing the vice grip. You absolutely want to make sure that your wheels and tires are chalked. Again off camera right here. I'm slowly opening the vice grip just a little bit, just to move the can how far I want it. And then I reclamp the vice grip. I don't know if any of that made sense to you. Here from Washington, these are washers. Actually, you should be really careful here. It's gonna get your finger crushed. So now what I can do is actually just let this go. It'll suck it in. Get your Carter keys or your Carter keys if you're Trucker Troy. And watch out for that. Look at that. Parking brake is on. The brake is on basically. And this is almost exactly a 90 degree angle. And you hit your your foot brake. It'll go quite a bit harder. So you got the diaphragm with all that air pressure. I don't know how many square inches it'd be pi times the radius of the of the pancake in there times two would be the square inches times whatever the pressure is in that probably 90 when you hit the brakes 90 times let's just say it's 10 square inches 900 pushing pounds all right so to finish this up you can see that's at a 90 with the parking brake set release it, it should be 110 de uh, 110 degrees we look back at this one uh, not a quite, uh, not quite the same distance, but pretty close. You can actually see here the rod kind of going up. Actually, while rewatching this footage, I always shoot a little bit and then I'll watch it and just make sure everything came out and makes sense. But while watching this, I saw that the can was actually in the bottom holes, 
and all the rest of the cans on the truck or on the top holes so that's what was causing this rod to be up like that so i'm going to take this apart put it in the top hole put it back together and that should straighten the rod out okay i'm going to go release the parking brake we'll see this angle should be we're from 90 to 110 about 110 Actually, I don't like that it's hitting right here on the, the stud, but unless this sock adjuster needs to be rotated on the S-cam a little bit, but these studs are a little bit longer than the factory cam ones. Just real quick, just to show you, it's not actually touching. You take this tape measure here fits fits right down between there so it's almost touching but if they're not touching that's fully released so they won't ever get any closer so should be good to go if you can't keep your slack adjuster from hitting the stud there you could back the clevis off a couple turns okay so i'm going to show you the two ways that i know um, how to adjust brakes First way I'm going to show you is the way I was taught. I had uh, I worked at a I worked at a truck stop. It wasn't like a bunch of certified mechanics. It was like a bunch of certified baloney, but that's how I, I was originally taught. And then I'm going to show you the way that a farmer taught me. And uh, this farmer, at one time, uh, he owned a tractor dealership in town, a big tractor ship tractor dealership I won't say which one um, but you've seen some of his tractors and some of my bonus footage but anyways they did dealer repairs and uh, so I'm gonna show you how he taught me to adjust okay so you got your clip in there yet the first way I was taught you gotta have at least a hundred pounds on your gauge in the cab I got about 110 so I should have plenty that's the same no matter what. Then you have to block the tires and release the brakes. Push the parking brake in. Tighten it all the way down till it's up against the wheel. And then you back it off a quarter of a turn up here. I don't know if you can see my hand up there. It's up there. Turn it a quarter of a turn on the back and a half a turn on steers or pushers. There are several types of different slack adjusters, but they all have the same principles. There will always be a release mechanism, and it will always be a quarter of a turn for drives and a half a turn for steers and pusher axles. Your, your wheels will roll. The way the farmer taught me is you tighten it down to the drum. And then you put pressure on the tire like you're trying to roll it. And you slowly start backing it off. And as soon as that wheel starts spinning, then you stop. And then your brake's adjusted. So you tell me what you think is better. I think this automatic slack adjuster is going to put it where it wants it. Pull that out, keep it. That's sure handy. It'd be nice if it was tapered in the jaw, right here. It's not tapered. And I guess it works. Okay. So this brake is adjusted. I'm gonna go pull the parking brake. And we'll see if it see if it goes out and then see if I can move it by hand. Yeah, right, ain't moving, not budging. We can set this truck on the ground. So to review, what you wanna do is chalk your tires, release the brakes, remove the nuts. If the nuts are corroded, you can use penetrating oil, leverage and a hammer is your friend. 
Then you remove the pins. They can be seized in. Penetrating oil can help. Use a vice grip and a hammer to beat out the pins. If you need to, you can release or back the brakes off to remove that spring pressure. Then you want to remove the airlines. This is a good time to inspect airlines. Then you want to switch out the fittings and go in reverse, reinstalling your airlines, reinstalling your pins. Then you want to reinstall your nuts. Then you want to adjust your brakes and then set your brakes before you set the truck on the ground. If you're attempting this on your own for the first time and have questions, feel free to message me in the comments or on Instagram, and I'll do my best to help you through it. Thanks for your time, and have a nice day.